Uh, good morning. It is a good morning. And I want to thank you all for joining us uh, this morning to talk about uh, a subject central to the economic growth of the state of Washington. Uh, from my first day uh, on the job as governor uh, of this state, I've called for the passage of a comprehensive transportation package to ensure Washington State's uh, ongoing economic vitality. In my inaugural address, I said that no economic strategy would be complete without a comprehensive transportation plan for the whole state of Washington. And throughout one regular and two special sessions, I kept pushing legislators to get this job done and send to me a transportation package that I could sign that would keep our state moving forward. I was not alone in my efforts, of course. Uh, leaders from the business community, from the labor community, the environmental community, and local governments stood with me and expressed support for a comprehensive package. And it was one of the most unified efforts for a transportation package in Washington state history. Obviously, people know these issues uh, are considerably complex. And we achieved a remarkable sense of unity of these multiply um, interested communities in a transportation package. There were legislators from both sides of the aisle. <clears throat> but instead of moving forward with a comprehensive package, that would mean more jobs for the state, improved safety, congestion relief, and greater accountability, the legislature ultimately adjourned without any vote in the Senate at all. However, today, the need for action remains and remains even clearer than it was a couple of months ago. Our state's transportation challenges are not going away. Businesses east and west of the Cascades know how important it is to move goods quickly and efficiently. Moms and dads want to spend more time with their kids and less time stuck in traffic. Now, I've been working with Dow this morning talking about King County's pressing transportation needs. And he'll talk about those needs uh, in a few moments. If revenue package is not approved by 2014 by the state legislature, King County Metro could, say, could face 17% service cuts in bus system service. This could be the equivalent of about one out of five bus routes going down. And I know how important that is. I used to ride uh, route number five to the University of Washington. My wa wife uh, rode the bus when we were at the U as well. And my conversations with people throughout the state have shown that transportation is not just a King County problem. And it isn't just up to King County to find a solution. Across the whole of Washington state, our roads and bridges are going to deteriorate and deteriorate at a more rapid rate if we do not act this year. Roads, bridges, ferries, and ports are all at risk as the underpinning of our economy of deteriorating if the legislature does not act this year. Let me just give you some sense of what that means. If the legislature does not act this year, in the next biennium, 71 additional bridges in the state of Washington will become structurally deficient. That would be 38% of all of our steel bridges in the state of Washington. We will be experiencing a 52% decrease in the maintenance budget for our bridges and roads in the next biennium if we do not act. If we do not act, if the legislature doesn't get off the dime and act this year, only 14 out of 158 steel bridges will be repainted as they are needed. Just to give you some sense of how significant this problem is. Now, I also want to make this point. Dow's going to talk about King County this morning. We know how important bus service is. But it is just as important across the state of Washington. It's important in Yakima County that we reduce congestion in King County so that farmers and orchardists can move their fruit to the ports. This is a statewide economic issue of congestion right here in King County. And it's important for our state's continued aerospace leadership. 
and the tens of thousands of jobs that are dependent on aerospace. It's important that we invest in our I-405 and Snohomish County freight corridors. And it's important to the men and women in our construction industry who are ready to get to work. There's probably no more rapid, more obvious way we can increase employment than, in fact, to pass a transportation project. <clears throat> now, despite the Senate's abject failure to move any transportation bill, I remain an optimist on this subject. Now, this is a state that built a replacement span over the Skagit River on the I-5 corridor in 27 days. When the will is there, we know we can get things done. And we know the support is there from the business community. I think this is very important. This is why we ought to have a bipartisan success this year on transportation. <clears throat> and now we need legislators to continue their willingness to listen. I want to say that I stand ready to work in a bipartisan fashion to move a transportation package forward and get it over the finish line this year. I'm continuing talking with legislative leaders about what a package would look like and how to get it done. <clears throat> if the leaders of both chambers can show that the consensus is there, that the votes are still there in the House, and I believe they are, and that the Senate now is ready to act, I'm prepared to call a special session as early as November to get this job done. I think it would be great for this state if we've got a transportation package for the whole state that's comprehensive by the time of the Apple Cup. That'd be a victory for both sides of the Cascades and both parties. But it takes both parties working together to get this job done. Now, for making this to happen, we need a package that continues progress in what we've already started, addresses our critical maintenance needs, and funds a truly balanced and multimodal system. So let's be clear. We need three things to get a transportation package through, uh, hopefully, this November. One, we need serious and aesthetic intent from both sides of the aisle and from both chambers. Two, we need everyone involved to be solution-oriented and willing to compromise. And three, we need a deal that gets the votes necessary to send it to my desk for signature. In the coming weeks, I'll be going on the road and visiting people in their communities to talk about the infrastructure needs across our state. And I look forward to these conversations. Like I said, I'm an optimist. By nature and because of the optimistic the fundamental values of this state, we can get this job done. Our economy depends on it. Our quality of life depends on it. And the future of six and a half million people and growing Washingtons depend on it. We need a statewide 21st century transportation system for all of Washington, and we need it this year. Now, I'd like to turn it over to Dow, who's going to talk about King County, and his description is going to be important not just to King County, but for all of economic growth for the state of Washington. Dow. Well, thank you, Governor. And I want to thank Governor Inslee for his leadership on this <coughs> issue and for recognizing right from the start how urgent our need is for transportation solutions for the people of the state and for this Puget Sound region and for this county. Uh, after a very productive conversation this morning, the governor has charted a path to a special session to get our state moving again. We must meet that challenge. The consequences of continued delay are unacceptable. We need the tools to address our urgent transportation needs, and we need them now. We've assembled a strong coalition with representation from, from groups who don't often line up behind an issue together, business and labor, education, hospitals, environmental groups, maritime, transit advocates, and local governments, all supporting the approval of a comprehensive state transportation package. It's hard to think of anyone who has not joined in this effort. Together, we ask the legislature to invest in state highways, in, in freight mobility like SR 520 and 167, in transit like buses, 
in roadways and other key infrastructure to keep our economy growing. And together, we asked for local authority to seek voter-approved funding for local investments in transit and to avoid a 17 percent cut, a cut of up to 17 percent in Metro Transit service, as well as addressing a huge backlog of local city and county unincorporated road needs. It is disappointing that the Senate failed to even take up for a vote this broadly supported and comprehensive package. But our coalition has not given up. The governor has not given up, and I won't give up on one of the most critical issues facing our state and our economy. It is now incumbent upon the Senate Republican Caucus to work with their colleagues in the Senate to engage with members of the House who have already voted to approve this transportation package. I have confidence that a solution will be found because a solution must be found. It is our responsibility in our generation to build the infrastructure that will help our economy grow and provide the platform, the foundation for success for those who come after us. In King County, we cannot allow 2014 to pass without an answer to this problem. We want to be part of a statewide solution. We, the two million people of this county, want this state to succeed. If we were to remain competitive on the world stage and maintain the quality of life we've come to enjoy, we must address tra transportation infrastructure. I applaud the governor and his call to action and will join with our broad coalition of supporters to get a comprehensive transportation package approved by the legislature this year. And now we'll take your questions. Um, this is for the governor. About a three or four part of the year, but how does it fit in with the Republican listening tour for their transportation package? How are you going to deal with the fact that uh, you've got a very super solid 25 vote block and that can block anything you want to do in the Senate? And I recently talked with Curtis King, and he was talking more along the lines of, oh, let's do reforms for 2014, hold off on anything retarding new taxes until a later legislative session beyond 2014. Throw all those at you. Well, uh, to start with, this is a, a bipartisan effort on listening to Washingtonians. We've been listening since January to Washingtonians, so this is not new for us on the Democratic side of the aisle. But this will be a bipartisan effort. There will be Democratic senators at these hearings, about a half dozen hearings across the state. And I welcome the fact that the majority coalition is going to be out there listening to people in the state of Washington, because if they listen, what they're going to hear is, A, we want more safety on our bridges. They're going to hear that it's unacceptable that we're going to have 71 structurally deficient bridges if we don't enact a, a way to finance bridge maintenance. They're going to hear that from Washingtonians. They're going to hear from business people that it's bad for business if we have increased congestion and decreased uh, freight mobility. They're going to hear when they go to King County, uh, on the east side of King County, those legislators are going to hear that it's unacceptable for us to be cutting out maybe one out every five hours of bus service that we have. They're going to hear that. And if they listen to that, they're going to hear that, that um, there is no excuse for inaction and the order is Winston Churchill's order of the day in World War II, which is action this day. We need action. And yes, we do need to improve the performance of our state in our transportation system. And we're doing that. Uh, the team that built a, a bridge across the Skagit in 27 days is actively now pursuing um, ways that we can reduce the time for permitting, ways that we can bring uh, a right sizing of planning and least cost planning systems ways to use lean management in our uh, management systems across the Department of Transportation. We're not waiting for the legislature on that. We're doing this already. So I think this is a golden opportunity for bipartisanship, but we have to have people, the majority coalition in the Senate, who will be willing to act. And I am here uh, in part because I think that there is a, an increasing recognition by members of the majority coalition that the economic case for a transportation package is simply unassailable. And they've been hearing it 
loudly and proudly from the business community that six months of inaction, passivity, and an abject failure to act is not satisfactory. And because they've been hearing that from the business community, we believe there's an increasing chance to get a package uh, this year. So we hope the leadership uh, will be sincere in their efforts saying they want to move a package. John, we're going we're gonna to go around here so everybody gets some chance. Joel? Uh, a little nearsighted, but I can still, looking at your list of road segments and bridges here, I can spot various urgent things that need to be done in the districts held by four different Republican senators as well as Rodney Tom. It is a tradition in the state where you essentially move something like this by offering people, uh, people projects in their district and so on. Uh, why has this either not been done or failed to work in this session when it, has, uh, when it has worked in the legislature in the past? Well, it's a really important question because transportation infrastructure in our state for decades has been a bipartisan effort. There are no bridges that are either Republican or Democrat. They're just Washington bridges. And for decades, we've had uh, a working to, uh, together of both parties to find a way to finance the continuation of safe bridges across our state. That hasn't happened this year. Now, I'm going to give you a brief synopsis why that is, because I'm more interested in the future than the past. Simply put, what happened was is that in the majority coalition, uh, folks who recognized the need for transportation infrastructure uh, you know, weren't willing to stand up and say we got to have a vote. And they listened to those who were in that coalition who were against any financing for any bridge, any time, over any river. And those folks uh, dominated that discussion. Now, you can go ask them why they did that. But I'm more interested in the future. And what I believe is, is that since legislators have returned home from the Senate, they have caught uh, both barrels from the business community saying, why haven't you acted? And as a result, we're seeing an increased appetite for action. And I think that's a healthy thing, and I welcome it. And if we pass, and I hope we will, a transportation package on a bipartisan basis, all sins will be forgiven. This will be a joint bipartisan success. And people are going to feel good about themselves in our state. And I want to do that. So we're going to give that hand open, the doors wide open for bipartisanship here, I think. Governor, you say you would like to call a special session. Why not be more decisive and just call it? Well, I'm being very decisive. Uh, what I'm saying today is I've made a decision. I will call a special session if we can show the votes for a package that can pass and get to my desk for a comprehensive package. But we got to see the votes first. I went through six months of discussion, planning, cajoling, negotiation, whatever verb you can come up with to try to get the Senate to act, and they didn't do a dang thing. Now they need to step up to the plate. And when they do and show me the votes for a package we can get done, we're going to call a special session to get that done. But we need to have some of the folks in the majority coalition to show their willingness to act for the state of Washington. Actually, given that so much of the problem is in Seattle, um, and given that Senator King actually requested a meeting in Seattle of these seven meetings, why did WashDOT decide to hold a meeting in Bellevue instead of in Seattle? <clears throat> you said WashDOT or you're speaking the majority coalition, is that what you're referring to? Well, my understanding is that WashDOT rejected the idea of holding a meeting in Seattle. Well, I, I'm not sure that that's the case, so we'll have to check on that to find out what the sequence of. But look, this is wherever you hold a transportation meeting in the state of Washington, Everywhere in the state of Washington has some transportation need. Uh, you know, people used to think of Metro and the bus service as just important downtown Seattle. Look, it's just as important to Redmond and Bellevue of people going both ways around and across Lake Washington. Uh, economic development, and, and as I indicated, uh, congestion in King County is just as important to the agricultural economy of central Washington to be able to get their products to the port to Asia. You know, we got tremendous opportunity for an economic growth because the Asian economies are growing. But if you can't get your truck, you know, around Lake Washington or across Lake Washington, you can't do business. So I guess what I'm saying is anywhere you have a meeting is going to be valuable. And I don't think there's anything against the, the town that owns the Space Needle and a couple of incredible football teams this year. Uh, I don't think there's any problem there. Governor, Governor you, have you, you talked to Senator King and the leaders of the majority coalition caucus about the idea of a special session, and, and how did they respond to that? We, we, we've talked, and, um, uh, and 
the good news coming out of that is first the majority coalition is going to have this series of meetings and there will be democratic senators at those meetings so that's a good sign coming out of that i've heard discussion uh, from the majority uh, leadership that they would like to participate in a transportation package mm -hmm. and they feel it's important for the state of washington and all of that language is is welcome we just need to see some votes behind it we need to see action behind that statement of intent. But like I say, we want to encourage people's willingness to step up to the plate. So I'm just going to praise their efforts today and hope that they really join us when the votes are, need to be cast. Governor, you mentioned this, that people need to come to the table and be willing to compromise for this package. I'm wondering how much you're willing to compromise. Are you willing to approve a package that doesn't include funding for the Columbia River Crossing? Well, we... Um, there are discussions right now um, of looking at other alternatives that do not involve funding for the Columbia River Crossing out of a transportation package. So we are reviewing the possibility of doing that without funding out of a particular transportation package. And I've had discussions with Governor Kitzhaber. We're looking at the possibilities in that regard. So I don't think that that should be a blockage at all for moving forward with a transportation package. And I, may, I should make clear it was, not, it was not the reason a transportation package did not pass in the last six months. At no time did the majority coalition say, look, we'll, we'll do a transportation package as long as we don't cross the Columbia River. That was never offered. It was never suggested. It was never intimated. The problem was getting people to step up to the plate and pass a financing package. Look, you can't maintain bridges or build bridges without dollars. And that's where people have been short. And that's where we need help. Governor, yeah, a quick two parts. Why not wait till January, the regular session? And are you still committed to, to having 10 cents be kind of the signature funding piece of this? Well, I think the earlier we act, the better for two reasons. One, we want to get this maintenance and we want to get these projects going. This is a good time to get bids out. Uh, costs are still low. They're going to be going up as the economy uh, improves, number one. Number two, uh, it's just political reality. Legislators uh, tend to have more uh, willingness, gumption, whatever you want to call it, in non-election years, and we hope to, to use that. Right, Second part of your question is about uh, the 10 cents. Look, we are open to ideas, and, and I want to express my willingness to different approaches than the ones that may have passed the House, but that has to be comprehensive. It has to deal with the maintenance needs that we have. It has to, to help places across the state of Washington, not just King County, because we need a statewide economic solution here, and we think we can get one. What's the overall price tag on the package? Or is yeah, did you want to say something? No, no, no. I just wanted one more question. We'll yeah, the, pr the price tag on the overall package you're seeking to pass? Uh, no, it was a you know, $10 billion project in the past. And uh, like I said, this is open for discussion, and we're willing to do that. We have not suggested any particular new specific package today because we want to extend our uh, open hand and open door to work in a bipartisan fashion to get a transportation package. Follow so, up on his question, do you have a basic package mapped out? It's yes, we do. pretty much the same. Yes, we do. In fact, not only do we or or is it radically different? Not only did we map it out, we passed it in the House. Okay. We put the votes on the board. We showed the jot and tittle of the exact language and the exact dollars and the exact bridges and the exact roads. We were ready to go. All we needed the Senate to do was to pass the green button, the go button. We hope to keep going. With that, we're going to continue our discussion another day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.